So that just happened. It's November 15th and vSphere 6.5, the GA bits uh, became available. The real download, it's now out for anyone to grab. You may need to ask for a trial if you haven't created a my VMware account before. But anyhow, here's the two downloads we want. And I'm just gonna jump right to the spot. I've already grabbed these two files, VMVisor and VCSA. Let me just show you that. Okay, there's the two files. Now, what we're looking at here is a fresh copy of Windows 10, this is the anniversary edition. And I stuck Chrome on there. That's it. Uh, there's nothing else on here. Let me just show that to you. So this is a very fresh start. Okay, one exception. Uh, VMware Tools um, and Java. Why Java? Oh, because of this. Let me show you. For the remote control I'm going to use and for mounting an ISO and installing the ESXi, I'm on a super server by Supermicro. So that means it's got something called IQVM. Soon it'll be HTML5, but for now it's a Java-based application that you launch from within your browser. So once this comes up, we're going to see what the machine is doing. And I'll need to mount an ISO and boot it. So I'm going to install ESXi 6.5 hypervisor on this super server. So to do that, virtual storage, select an ISO file, open an image, it lets me browse the file system. And in my case on the C drive, oh yeah, I went too far. It's actually in downloads in my case. There we go, VM Visor installer. So that's exactly the file it was telling me I should get. Notice 456, 410, okay, plug it in, click okay, and now that ISO is mounted. So we just mounted this file. Okay, now, what if you don't have IKVM? Don't worry about it. You can just make boot media uh, using something called Rufus. And I have an article about that. So Rufus, there it says invoking boot menu. While I'm talking, let me make sure something's happening. So I'm doing this in real time here. All right, A10 virtual drive. So I mounted an ISO and it pretends it's a CD-ROM drive and now it starts off the ESXi 6.5 installer. I'll admit I've used betas before, so this won't be too new to me, although I haven't had a chance to use it in the last few weeks, so I'm a little bit rusty in the install. I do know it's a whole lot easier than the old versions. And the reason I'm showing you a pristine Windows is that there's no you know, trickery or smoke and mirrors here or steps that I'm missing. This will be rough around the edges, unrehearsed, first run where I've never installed the GA bits before in this machine, but highly likely to go just fine. All right. So if we search for this way back in 2013, I published this article and it talks about going here and downloading some, this guy's a uh, wonderful little comp, Portable, executable. So you download this, you grab the portable version, and then you basically just follow along with my screenshot and format a USB drive properly for VMware. And VMware boots from it and then installs back to it. So one of the, right here, screenshot for screenshot, exactly what to do when you run that thing. There you go, and it makes your USB drive for you. So if you're watching this and you don't have a super micro super server or, or you know, Dell or HP or something without a band management, it doesn't matter. You can just run these directions, you'll end up with the same effect. And that is a machine that's booted with everything loaded into RAM, and then it lets you install wherever you want to install, okay? Machine on the right is a ZND 1567-12 core. So it's kind of a, a monster, uh, quite a beast here. And it looks like this. So physically, we're looking at a ZND with two 10 gig interfaces, two 1 gig, and a management interface. So as you're watching video on the right, you're watching this management interface on the left. Right there. Okay. So that's almost done and loaded into memory. So the question I was alluding to earlier is, 
why would you do this? Why would you install here, not an NVMe drive? Because the hypervisor runs out of memory. It rarely does writes. And you can move the log files with the occasional it writes, it does to USB somewhere else, but uh, it can easily run for years on a USB key. Just not a big deal. So what do I have in the system? I have a single NVMe drive. And the BIOS is set to UEFI mode, so it's another prerequisite I'll just point out. It's not required, but it's frankly easier on this system, and UEFI is the way going forward if you're going to turn on TPM or, uh, or um, you know, boot protection. There's features built into the Intel chipset that let you do that. And VMware 6.5 is now capable of handling that. All right, so soon it'll be loaded into memory, and then we'll start asking me the usual questions that a 6.0 update one install would ask you. Um, oh, actually, I should show you this. All right, so right here we've got how to install on ESXi. These directions for 6.5 are going to be awfully similar. I talk about the prerequisites and so forth, and then all the steps. So I just whip through all that, as you saw. All right, let me remove distraction and get to the actual install here. Okay, I'm hitting Enter, hitting F11. And you'll see 6.5 at the top. Okay, now where do I want to install it? I already said I don't want to put on NVMe. I want to put on the SanDisk UltraFit 32 gig USB drive, which, you know, even 8 gig would have been more than enough. I didn't really need something that big. But that's what comes with my Bundle 2 Super Server that you're looking at. Ready for hypervisors. Okay. Data gets overwritten. Yeah, yeah, we just hit enter. And I'm going to go with US default. You want to make sure NumLock is off. And the way the machine ships, numlock is off. So you don't get this uh, reversal of our problem with caps lock as well. You want that off as well. All right. A few more seconds of scanning. And then I have some more to talk about while the installer is underway. One last chance. We hit F11 and off we go. Okay. While the installer is underway, i got to talk about networking. So installing VMware, as you just saw, is ridiculously easy. Now, configuring is a little more involved. So let me just open this full screen here and show you what is this. This is my router. It's about $80. And here it is. Bunch of DHCP reservations. So the Xeon D1567 right here is where ESXi is going, and it's going to be IP address 41. So I've got all that worked out where this brand new copy of Windows 10 is going to do fine with forward and reverse lookups. So let me explain. NS lookup 10.10.1.41. That's a reverse lookup. How about forward? Kind of a long name, but it's showing ZND 1567 processor in a system called the 5028D, and it's why it's so long, because I've actually uh, done some demos with this. So that lookup worked. How about dot lab dot local? So this is proper DNS. You want all this working before you install. How about NS lookup? And the reverse is true too. So forward and reverse, fully qualified or not. That's proper DNS. So that means the rest of this install is going to go quite easily. You may have a different scenario, a different kind of router or situation with your DHCP and DNS server, but I would strongly encourage you to get all this squared away before you even begin. In my case, I had all these DHCP reservations for all the MAC addresses on the machine before I even uh, turned it on here for you today. Okay, so enough of that. Let's head back to the installer. Okay, it's at 75%. So we still have a little bit of time to take a quick peek here. We're here. So here we've got that article that says, hey, here's how you install mounting an ISO and all that. 
And then finally I say, hey, once you're authenticated, you can just point your browser to it. So that's kind of the brave new world here. Let's have a look. Browser. Notice I didn't say vSphere client or 32-bit client. Now it does say remove the media. How are we going to remove the media? It's kind of like virtually mounted over the network. Go to virtual storage, plug out. There. ISO is no longer mounted. Now I hit enter. It reboots. And ta-da, we have ourselves an ESXi server. This is with the bias set exactly as it comes to you from Wired Zone that uh, is a reseller of the bundle, bundle 2 option. So again, a very much a ready for ESXi um, situation where basically you stick in a USB drive in the front, close the door, power it on, walk away, do the rest of the install from remote like I'm doing right now with IPMI. Uh, no need for a keyboard mouse or a VGA cable to hook up to a monitor. That's the point of VMware ESXi. It's largely intended to be a headless operating system. You'll see, if you have no idea how to hook it to IBMI your first time, well, the IP address is echoed right in the screen. So if you were to hook up a monitor briefly to it just to figure out, oh, what IP address is it? It's that straightforward. You read it right off the BIOS boot screen. All right, so when the BIOS is done initializing, uh, this particular machine has a speaker, uh, so it's gonna beep but it's not close enough for you to hear in the microphone that I have in front of me here. Let me move the mouse out of the way, all right. Machine is coming up, it's finished with the boot, and soon we see VMware ESXi 6.5 booting for the first time ever. And actually, we're not quite tall enough for the number of pixels to actually see quite to the bottom. It's a little bit annoying, but that's just an artifact of the way, uh, well, I gotta live with it, because of my 1920-1080 for you here. All right, now during this, there it is, nice. I actually like to record this whole part of the video. I might speed it up shortly, but I wanna see NVMe driver load. And um, it doesn't really matter because you can check the version of the NVMe driver later. But yeah, I'll be curious to see how it um, works. And I'm hoping for Intel M.2 NVMe or Intel PCI-based cards that are NVMe, like the 750 series. Hopefully it's got drivers cooked you know, baked right in to 6.5. That was uh, an issue uh, during some of my early tests of earlier builds of 6.5. With Samsung though, this is a Samsung 950 Pro M.2 drive that I've got in there. It's probably not gonna be a problem. It hasn't been since the five, five days. So let me just show you a look at what we're talking about here. So you'll see a tiny little M.2 NVMe device that runs incredibly fast under Windows and quite fast under VMware as well, which is nice, without even needing to do a driver. So um, how fast? Well, right here. These speeds are pretty insane. All right, so great. We've got ourselves a hypervisor. And I cheated, right, in a way. I showed you that in my DNS server, I said, hey, take the MAC address of this machine and make a reservation. So it's always gonna be .41 and it's gonna have this name. So VMware has been installed with DHCP and that's pretty handy. Uh, yeah, you probably wouldn't do that in production and you can always go and customize that and, and change it or hard code it if you want. But in my case, I always have a DHCP server in this little metal box router. Um, so I'm, I'm just gonna move on, keeping this video as simple as possible, but those of you who need to hard code your IP or change DNS settings or IP, you can hit F2. Now, probably should hit F2 because it'll show you a couple of things. One, IPMI by default gets in your way. The new HTML5 version doesn't. So let me just see if I can get in and avoid the Java thing. Control, future versions will let me Mount ISO files, but for now, like I said earlier, I had to use Java. All right, so now we have a different user interface. And this one I can hit F2 without worry. So I'm gonna close Java down. Java's gone. And now I moved over to showing you the rest of the steps here with IKVM, which is much more VMware friendly. Thank you, Supermicro. All right.
doing the password that we said earlier during the install and going to test management network and just simply hit enter. It's pinging the gateway and it's resolving the host name. So my network's all peachy. Basically, that was just a quick little test. And it also shows me the memory, 128 gig that was recognized, and the CPU. So everything looks good. So what do we need to know to do next? How about we point our browser to that IB? That sounds like a good idea. And we don't really need any of those other windows. We can just bring up Chrome. XD and it's in my history, but dash R was for remote console. This time I'm trying to point to the IP address of the host. Now Chrome will sometimes suggest, hey, did you mean HTTP like that? That's just what I should have typed. But it did not do that. So this time I've typed in, typed in the HTTPS, click advanced, bypass the warning, and I should get right into the new HTML5 based VMware ESXi client. So this is awesome, right? Think how easy that install uh, was just now. Pretty slick. Okay. A few things to point out here. You have a choice to opt in for helping VMware and some sort of uh, error reporting program there. Okay, first time launching it was a little sluggish, a little surprised at that, but. All right, I always turn on auto refresh to 15 seconds. And this is a lab with me talking to you. I don't really want an application timeout because I might need to pause this video and resume and I don't want the interruption of a log off. That's crazy in production. You do would not want to do that. All right. So we're seeing my hardware. We're seeing a nice little summary screen. Uh, we have a 60 day warning. So the clock is starting to tick. I can close that blue bar and we're in good shape. 